Hi everyone and welcome to today's Vision webinar, The New Kid on the Block is Back, Why Earned Media is Back in the Driver's Seat. I'm Mary Morgan Lamparis and your moderator for today. During today's webinar, you'll learn how to uncover key trends and emerging topics to create an effective content strategy, enhance your results. by applying the power of earned media integrated with paid and owned, improve the measurability of your programs, and deliver true business ROI. Before I introduce our presenter for today, I'd like to cover a few quick housekeeping points. Questions? We will be having a moderated Q&A at the end of today's webinar, so feel free to use the questions tab on your webinar panel to submit your questions. Recording. We will be recording this webinar and sending it out in a link uh, with the video afterwards. And if you're on Twitter, Please feel free to live tweet the session using the hashtag Vision Webinar. That's all one word. We will be sending some prize packs out to people who are tweeting today uh, throughout our presentation. And now let me introduce our presenters. Steve Cox has more than 25 years of experience in leading public, public relations, marketing, operations, personnel, and general management. Steve is Vice President of Public Relations for Sodexo, a leading food services and facilities management company. He is responsible for developing and implementing integrated strategies for enhancing key external stakeholders to enhance, protect, and defend the Sodexo brand and reputation and support the company's business objectives. He served Sodexo's primary, as Sodexo's primary external spokesperson and ambassador for the company. And he is responsible for media relations, corporate relations, and issue management. Along with the line of business communications, he is also responsible for integrating corporate social responsibility communications activities across diversity and inclusion, sustainability, wellness, and Sodexo's foundation, South Humber, areas. Our other presenter today is Ken Winko, our Senior Vice President of Marketing at Vision and PR Newswire, where he manages the company's global marketing strategy. He's also a member of the Executive Management Committee. He has more than 20 years of marketing product and business development experience in bringing innovative marketing programs and solutions to market for both B2B and B2C organizations. Prior to Vision and PR Newswire, Ken held senior level marketing and product leadership roles at Dun & Bradstreet, ADP, Citigroup, and IBM. Ken is an advisory board member of the CMO Council. He is a frequent speaker at major industry conferences and has been covered in publications such as the Wall Street Journal, Tech Target, Information Management, the Demand Gen Report, and Marketing Sherpa. And now we'll dive into why earned media is back in the driver's seat. Thank you so much for tuning in. Welcome to the webinar. Ken, the floor is yours. Thanks, Mary Morgan. Thanks, everybody, for joining us today. Really appreciate it. So today, Steve and I are here to talk to you about the re-emergence of earned media. But before we start looking forward, sometimes it's helpful to understand where we've been. And we all know the old saying that everything happens in 20-year cycles. Well, that certainly seems to be the case with current events. Uh, first of all, the Backstreet Boys are back in concert. Uh, just read, actually, they're in residency at Planet Hollywood for uh, those of you who want to go see them in Las Vegas the next time you're there. Obviously, a Clinton just ran for the White House again. A new Harry Potter book is out for you fans out there, uh, Harry Potter and the Cursed Child, and that's about 20 years after the initial release, which is unbelievable. Um, and Pokemon is back in popularity with their mobile app. So why do I bring all of this up? Well, 20 years ago, PR was at a height of popularity. Budgets were generous. Brands recognized the power of PR to help drive the business. Some have even have gone so far to say it was the golden age of PR. But I'm here to tell you that actually there's a re-emergence of earned media. So here you see a headline from Entrepreneur, The Golden Age, How the PR Industry is Coming into Its Own. And it looks like this is coming straight out of an article from the mid-90s, but it's not. This was written last year. In the article, Jennifer Connolly talks about the fact that the communications teams and professionals have had to evolve, not just from promotion, but into full-fledged and comprehensive brand strategy. So crafting the right messages, shaping stories in real time, and identifying the right influencers, and 
engaging them across the right mediums at the right time. So in a digital era where brand sentiment can take a drastic turn in an instant, as we all know, either positive or negative, a strong communications team is critical for organizational success. So from my perspective, in many ways, now is a great time to be in PR, and it's a very exciting time to be in our industry. Now I'm going to take you through some research. So what's driving this shift? Why is earned media back? Well, we have a study here from the Edelman Trust Barometer, and for those of you who haven't read it, it's just fantastic research. So in last year's study, they asked the question, to what extent do you trust the following information sources? The highest percentage were recommendations from friends and family at 78%. Second, academics, analysts, and other experts at 65%. So the top two information sources when making buying decisions are either friends and family or academics, analysts, and other experts. Now, for those of you who would also say that, you know, as I would, is, you know, out of the 22% who don't trust their friends and family, I'm not sure what that means, but it's very clear that it's about familiarity, expertise that is driving decisions. Now, let's compare that to how much people trust brands. Only 61% say they trust companies that they use. Pretty low if you think about it. Meanwhile, 32% trust celebrities, and 31% trust companies that they don't use. So if you're not a customer of a particular brand, you probably trust them less than Kim Kardashian. is in that takeaway. So there's been a big shift. And why is this? This is because people have pervasive information in mobile and social and other digital channels. Not only that, but we all as consumers, because we're savvier, are increasingly resistant to advertising. So a recent study from Outsell actually showed that 88% of consumers say that advertising has little to no influence on them when making purchase decisions. And out of this, 80% say they never click on online ads. What's happening? People are putting ad blockers on. They're just not clicking on ads at all, or they're not even viewing the area of the screen. So advertising is decreasing in effectiveness. Despite this, Despite this, all these facts, 83% of all marketing investment goes towards buying online and offline ads. So it's a traditional approach to a modern problem. Something has to change. And actually, marketers are rethinking their strategy. According to our own research with Outsell, 81% of senior book marketers believe that earned media is more effective than paid media. Why is that? Paid, advertise, paid advertising efficacy is declining. The impact of owned media is limited to your own viewership. So earned media is more critical than ever for your success. And other research actually even extends this even further. So this is from the Content Marketing Institute. So when you look at the pie and where marketers are focusing in terms of their areas of responsibility and on their investment, you can see 23% say it's from an ownership level, 19% product marketing, 18% demand gen, followed by PR and corporate communications at 15%. But when you combine that with social at 14%, that actually becomes the number one area of accountability for B2B content marketing. This is a significant shift and recognition from the marketing community that earned media is critical. So what does it take to be successful? Well, looking at the tactics through our own research, we actually show that a large majority of large companies and small companies are using, using earned media tactics. So here you see a chart that actually shows the percentage of firms using particular tactics. Regular press releases, 
pursuing speaking slots, 96%, testimonials, case studies, monitoring social, managing communities, pursuing rankings, seeding story ideas, all well over 90% for large firms. Meanwhile, even small firms are using, a large majority are using these same tactics. So this research actually validates that earned media tactics are gaining prominence as part of the marketing mix. So what does it come down to? Ultimately, it's connecting to the right people in the right place at the right time. It's not the quantity of people that you're reaching at one particular time, which is the traditional model. It's about the right people who power the most influence and actually can drive action within the community that you're trying to serve. So now I'm going to hand it off to Steve, who is going to take you through Sodexo's earned media strategy. Ken, thank you, and I, I appreciate everybody's uh, time today. Again, uh, Steve Cox here, and I, I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you through, as, as Kim suggested, a slice of our earned media strategy. And I, I'll give you, uh, kind of give you an in, a window into, uh, you know, what we do to some extent, how we do it, and then, uh, and then what some of those results uh, look like. Uh, just a quick level set on uh, on Sodexo as an organization, in case uh, you're not familiar with the brand. Um, global Fortune 500 firm. Uh, we're in the outsourcing business, uh, principally the uh, facilities management uh, and food service uh, operations. Those are kind of the two big buckets uh, that we outsource uh, into. Uh, we work across eight different uh, industry segments, you know, so it's you know, corporate environments, healthcare, government, K through 12, universities, so on and so forth. Um, we're the 19th largest employer in the world, about 420,000 employees worldwide across 80 countries. Uh, in North America, that's about 133,000 uh, employees. Uh, and ultimately, uh, while we're in the outsourcing business, we're in the business of uh, impacting and improving quality of life. Uh, you know, we focus on improving performance for individuals, uh, for organizations, for communities, uh, and in so doing, uh, improve quality of life. So that's just kind of a quick, quick sketch on the, uh, the Sodexo brand. Let me get you into um, kind of the earned media strategy. Uh, I would tell you something we've done with the, the public relations team is uh, pretty tightly define uh, you know what our what our goals and mission are, and, and really the focus is around uh, it's around brand building, uh, it's around client retention, it's around supporting sales and new business development. Uh, and on the one hand, you look at that and you think that's pretty self-evident, that's pretty straightforward. On the other hand, uh, it's actually somewhat liberating to have that type of focus. Uh, because that uh, you know those goals really serve as a filter for what we do on a daily basis. Uh, you know it drives what we choose to do, what we choose not to do, uh, what we choose to invest in or not invest in. Um, so it is uh, it is focusing and it is liberating to have that uh, that specific goal uh, outlined. Um, something I'll mention to you that uh, certainly some of you are uh, aware of, and different industries have their own dynamic here. But we we know in the the outsourced services business, which has a long sales you know, lag period or lead cycle uh, that, you know, about 60 to, you know, 65, 66 percent, almost two-thirds of the due diligence for a B2B sale is done digitally. So it's done online in terms of research, vetting, um, information gathering uh, before anybody talks to anybody. Um, so that's, that's a key point here that I'm going to get into, uh, or a key point that drives what, uh, you know, what I'll speak to about, uh, about how we're uh, operating. Knowing that there's that much digital due diligence around a long lead B2B sale, we chose from a PR perspective, from an earned media perspective, to get in the media publishing business. And that doesn't mean we're not in the media relations business, because certainly we are, but we felt like um, we weren't necessarily getting everything we wanted or needed out of pure media relations, and we really needed to get into the publishing business. Uh, and one of the things we did was we did a little bit of a redefinition, if you will, around the concept of earned media. Uh, and that's not to say that we stepped completely away from, uh, you know, from current uh, industry definitions. Um, but if you think of earned media in the, in the context of, you know, unpaid digital pickup and then certainly social media engagement, think of both of those as earned media. That unpaid digital pickup as well as social, uh, social media engagement suddenly your universe of earned media starts to expand uh, dramatically and it gives you a completely different perspective on how to approach an earned media strategy. So, you know, I'm looking at the, um, looking at the, uh, the, the, the slide here in particular. 
uh, underneath the drop down of goals, you know, one of the things we decided to do was, okay, well, let's get, let's get into press release business where we're producing, you know, about four per week times 50 weeks gives us about 200 a year. So almost, almost every single day you've got a press release rolling out of Sodexo. But the idea here is not so much that it facilitates um, media engagement, meaning a media member is going to look at that release and suddenly uh, be motivated to pick up the phone and call us or send us an email and want to do an interview. Yeah, the, if, if that happens, that's wonderful. If that's a byproduct of what we're doing, that's fantastic. But the real goal around the press release strategy uh, is that it, it, it's content um, that becomes aggregated, that becomes posted, that begins to live in the digital ecosystem that, re, that, that exists as curated content and serves as a hook and a traffic gatherer and driver into the Sodexo uh, digital ecosystem. So uh, again, go back to that, that concept of uh, redefining uh, earned media, unpaid digital pickup, and suddenly you start to see how, how that strategy with the press release works for us. It's not that, not that a media member is going to write a story as much as the release becomes curated content on third-party news sites, affinity sites, websites, blah, 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 et cetera. And then that serves as a hook that drives traffic into the Sodexo digital ecosystem. And I'll give you some of the, uh, the specific data on that here in just a second. But you can see in the outcomes portion of this slide that um, you know, five of the six bullets there are all focused on, on digital outcomes. Whether it's impacting the due diligence process, uh, it's engaging around search engine rankings, it's driving traffic, engagement around social media. You know, there's a heavy digital focus here on the earned media side. So let me go ahead and, and move to the next slide, and I'll get you into some of the, um, some of the data around the strategy we're pursuing with the press release. I'll give you, the, um, you know, kind of the bottom line up front here. Uh, we started... Um, started this process with the, you know, the press release strategy. And we, frankly, we call it our S3 strategy. You'll see that referred to in here. It's our services story strategy. Um, and really, those releases are all focused on the Sodexo business. They're focused on our capabilities, our offers, our products, and our services. Uh, and frankly, you string that together as an acronym, uh, what we call it the COPS model. Capabilities, offers, products, services. It's Sodexo on Sodexo uh, in a press release. Now, we also have a, you know, a thought leadership blog uh, that's on Sodexo Insights, uh, SodexoInsights.com. Um, well, that's really Sodexo on issues. You know, that's an opportunity to share, you know, unique perspectives, insights, uh, kind of around, you know, uh, what we're doing, why it's important, impact it's having on uh, industries, people, organizations, communities. So there's the distinction between what we're doing with press releases and then what we're doing from a thought leadership perspective. Um, but in terms of the releases, you know, we've operated really, you know, kind of in two 90-day periods. Uh, and you can see the dates there, you know, kind of mid-April to, to the end of July. Um, I, and then you can see that, uh, you know, the 180-day period from mid-April uh, up until the end of October. And a couple things that are, that are interesting in terms of the bottom line. If you take two, two basic metrics, share voice uh, and brand sentiment, uh, you can see us compared against a couple of competitors in terms of the benchmark period where Sodexo was in terms of share of voice and then where Sodexo was in terms of brand sentiment. And then you can track that within the first 90 days of that press release strategy. Again, think about you know, press release a day, you know, focused on our brand, focused on capabilities, offers, products, services. And you can see how the shift uh, occurred in that first 90 days. You know, we moved from uh, about a 27% share of voice to about a 46% share of voice. Um, and, and essentially you know, siphoned away some of the share of voice from some of our competitors. And then you can see how that, uh, that played out when, uh, when aggregated across the full 180-day period, uh, where, where we essentially end up with about a 10-point margin in terms of share of voice. Although the really, you know, perhaps the more impressive stat, if, uh, if you will, is around brand sentiment, where um, you know, prior to the press release strategy, our, our positive brand sentiment was running at about 22%. Uh, 180 days later, uh, it's running at, at four times that rate almost, at about 79%. Now, we all know, too, the brand sentiment has, uh, particularly when it's, when it's run through an automated uh, system, uh, has a margin of error associated with that. And I would tell you that um, these brand sentiment figures that you're looking at have that same you know, margin of error applied to each period, if you will. So we could, we could debate you know, the margin of error, but what's undeniable is you know, the gigantic jump out of you know, what was a 22% uh, brand sentiment uh, you know, positive rating 
up to about an 80% rating. So even with the margin of error, it's undeniable that there was a, uh, a significant shift. In terms of you know, some of the topics uh, that um, have worked for us, uh, and I'm not going to try and read them, uh, read them line by line to you, but you can, you can take a look at some of these in terms of um, what's being viewed by the general public. Um, this is kind of a top ten list. It spans, it spans across four uh, of our eight industry segments. Uh, and it spans across our, our COPS model, that capabilities, offers, products, and services uh, idea, uh, in the sense that uh, we touched on our supply chain, we touched on environmental impact, we focused on employees with disabilities, we've hit technology, uh, we've weighed in on community impact. So those, are, those are just examples of being able to weigh in on certain topics across our industry segments via this particular earned media strategy. And again, that, those are public views. In the next slide, you can take a look at how, um, how the media uh, has picked up. And it's slightly, it's slightly different. Um, and that's, that's interesting in and of itself. And I, I'll be honest with you, we need to do our own deeper analysis in terms of what's resonating with the general public and why, and then what's resonating with actual media members and why. Uh, and then what is the difference? And that may be, how do we reconcile that difference or how do we exploit success on either end of that? Uh, so that's um, you know, additional, uh, additional research and work that we need to do. But even on the media side, again, you can see that we span across three of our eight industry segments with this, this top ten list. Um, interesting topics that resonated, employee engagement, uh, student nutrition, community impact, technology, innovation. You know, those were topics that media members um, were most interested in and focused on. Uh, and in fact, I actually had some of these releases that you know, turn into interviews and subsequent storylines as well. Uh, the, the next slide is the, uh, the eye chart slide, and that's kind of the big aggregate of um, you know, various sets of data from uh, views hits, web crawlers, media views, public views, um, you know, multimedia content engagement. You, you can see the, the, the dynamic of this. Uh, a couple of things that are, uh, that are interesting, and you see it's broken out across periods there in terms of the first 90 days, second 90 days, and then the roll-up of the 180-day period. Um, Interesting that the um, you know the web crawler hits actually dropped from the first 90 days to the second, um, and that's something we're, we're we're taking a look at. You know what what is that? What's the, what's the what's the algorithm issue that we need to account for in our releases in terms of keywords, headlines, data points, uh, imagery, infographic? What is it that we need to account for um, that would uh, that would impact uh, those particular views and hits? You can also see within the, the media views and public views, and that's kind of that second row of boxes toward the bottom of those, um, those boxes, uh, the public views actually increased, uh, actually increased by about 22, 22.5% uh, from the first 90 days to the second. So on the one hand, you end up with um, you know, some of the automated pickup, automated views dropping, the actual, you know, no kidding public views uh, actually increased by, by 22%. We also noted, you know, kind of dropping down to that uh, that bottom row of boxes, that our uh, our overall uh, multimedia content views increased, but then the level of engagement around those multimedia content views uh, decreased from uh, the first 90 days to the second. Again, a number of issues that could be factors there. We're still exploring that. You know, why why did that happen? Was it topical? You know, was it a topical issue? Uh, was it the type of content? Uh, was it the frequency of content? Was it too much of it? Not enough of it? Uh, you know, those are issues that uh, that we're taking a look at at this point. On the on the next slide, we're kind of making a leap here from what were next slide. There we go. I'm making a leap from the the pure press release earned media metrics into just a broader uh, digital view, if you will, kind of, kind of Sodexo digital ecosystem. Uh, so including um, our press release activity, including our Sodexo Insights uh, media publishing platform, you know, our blog site, uh, including our social media uh, sites as well, you know, which of course span you know, Facebook, Twitter, uh, LinkedIn, and whatnot. Um, a couple things I'll, I'll mention to you here that um, you know, we end up with about 80% of our traffic coming from 
Um, it's, it's direct traffic, it's search traffic, it's social media. Okay, so the point there is that uh, we're not having to rely on paid promotion to get digital traffic. Okay, that's your takeaway from, from this particular slide. The, the idea there is that the, the earned media concept that we're pursuing, you know, kind of go back to that redefinition of what earned media is in terms of unpaid digital pickup and then social media engagement. Okay, so that, that, that redefined aspect of earned media is paying off in terms of the traffic uh, that we're getting, not having to rely on paid promotion. Now that's not to say that we aren't doing some paid promotion because we are, and that's not to say that we won't do paid promotion in the future because we will, uh, but I think one of the things that we're learning uh, and will apply going forward is where, when and where to do the paid promotion. You know, we'll get smarter about, uh, about when, where, how to do that uh, such that we're getting, um, you know, getting the max bang for our buck when we do it. Uh, and that's one of the things that that redefinition of earned media and then this particular strategy has done for us. Uh, it's actually made us smarter on the paid promotion side and will make us smarter still going forward um, and, you know, as we get more experience with it. And the next slide, again, this is overall digital uh, performance metrics. Um, so if you look at the advent of the, uh, you know, the press release strategy, sync it up with our overall media publishing activities, um, you know, what we end up with kind of that second 90-day period was an overall share of voice in the digital space. It's up about 17%. I and mean, that's solid. To be able to do that in 90 days, that's, that, that's solid. It's actually a pretty big leap in a 90-day uh, period. Uh, we'll see how that starts to play out over time, whether that's uh, a sustainable level. Not that we're going to increase 17% every 90 days, but whether we stay at the current level or we start to, uh, we start to recede or do, we, or do we grow incrementally thereafter. That'll be interesting to see how that plays out. Um, overall traffic levels um, to, across all the Sodexo digital properties up 14%. You know, prior prior to uh, the S3 strategy being implemented, uh, and that's and that's solid. Uh, and then within the second 90 days, um, you know, 41% share of voice that ends up being about 10 points higher uh, than one of our particular competitors. In fact, if you went back to the benchmark period, we were about 10 points lower than that competitor. You know, now with the advent of the strategy, we're about 10 points higher on the, uh, the share of voice, uh, given that, uh, that press release strategy, that S3 strategy. I'm going to give you just, uh, just a couple more slides here uh, with kind of some, um, you know, some baseline, big picture uh, digital metrics. And the one, the one in particular I'll, I'll highlight, and it's the headline here, uh, you know, we end up with about a 55% increase in overall mentions uh, for the Sodexo brand on third-party news and media sites. Again, if I go back to you know, what I talked about earlier, that really this is a, it's a digital play for us in terms of media publishing. So the press release becomes a, a digital vehicle. It becomes a media publishing tool for us. It's a, it's a piece of content that's published uh, by our brand. Um, and, and while I'd said we were not necessarily looking for journalists to write stories, what we were looking for and what we actually are getting is for those press releases to be posted to, aggregated by, show up on, uh, curated as content on third-party news and media sites. And that's happening. It's absolutely happening. In fact, I, I can tell you that uh, generally uh, every one of these press releases we put out ends up landing on about 200 third-party websites. Um, and I would think you know, that many organizations would like to be able to pump out a piece of content every single day and have it land on 200 third-party sites. And then, oh, by the way, have those 200 third-party sites begin, begin feeding traffic into your digital ecosystem. And that's, that's ultimately what's taking place here, and that's the media publishing concept in a nutshell. And again, that takes you back to that, that redefinition of earned media um, and, and why, as, uh, as Ken talked about, you know, earned, earned media is making a strong comeback, at least, at least for Sodexo in a slightly different context. Uh, but I would, I would tell you earned media is making, uh, making a very strong comeback. Um, on, the, on the next slide, this is the uh, this is the last um, the last slide I have. Um, the particular point I'll, I'll make to you, and it's, it's the box out to the right, lower um, lower box out to the right. Um, again, an overall digital metric over the entire 180 day period that we've run this strategy, and you can see that essentially where where Sodexo has come in terms of our uh, you know, our competitors with the, um, uh, you know, with, the with the share of voice. Uh, is that we are we are completely in the mix now, whereas we were um, more than 10 points behind uh, 180 days ago. 
Um, yeah, anything could happen in the in the next 180 days, but I would expect our performance to continue and to improve. Um, and it's not uh, uh, not not out of the realm of possibility that uh, in the next 90 day period, uh, our overall digital share of voice uh, would be in that top slot, at least compared to these you know these particular competitors. Um, so I'll just I'll, I'll kind of wrap my particular uh, piece here, and then I'll mention it back to uh, throw it back to Ken. I think a key to to our strategy and the key to our results, one has been that, that redefinition of what earned media is and then developing a strategy that aims right at that, uh, that gives us the ability to have that digital play um, in a different way, i.e. through a press release strategy and drive traffic back into the digital ecosystem. Okay, so what, what do we need there? We need a partner that can you know, help us play across the digital spectrum, uh, can support convergence, like Ken was talking about, across the digital spectrum, you know, absolutely, we need a partner that can deliver a world-class distribution capability because if you don't have that backbone, uh, at least with the execution of this strategy, then uh, you know, your life's going to be hard. You've got to have that world-class distribution capability. And ultimately, you've got to have a partner who can support a measurement protocol that's moving toward correlation uh, and moving toward spanning that full PR, marketing, and sales continuum. Okay, so with that said, Ken, I, I appreciate you letting me uh, uh, offer a Sodexo perspective today. I'll turn it back over to you. Thanks, Steve. Uh, very impressive results. Uh, and, and I can't say enough about how progressive they are in terms of approach and thinking holistically, which is, you know, and, and Steve really talked about, uh, you know, in an in-depth way how, from an earned media perspective, he's, he's really actually conducting an, a multi-channel earned media strategy. Um, and as he had articulated, I think very clearly, number one, it goes beyond just earned media pickup. There's, uh, you know, what other websites that will, that will be, then place you. There's search visibility organic uh, lists um, that you'll, you'll get. Um, there's an increase in social shares. Um, and ultimately, it drives back to your own channels in terms of increased web traffic. Um, and ultimately, that derives new business. Um, and so from a decision marketing perspective, I'm not going to go through the detail that Steve did in terms of our earned media strategy specifically. But what I wanted to kind of uh, reiterate to you is something that, that Steve brought up uh, a couple of times during his presentation, which is that it's really got to be about a holistic multi-channel strategy. So here you see um, what, the way that we actually think about our overall marketing strategy, which is in context of paying to earn and own. And some people have an S in there in terms of shared, but I share Steve's view that actually shared um, interactions are actually earned. So if, you know, we put out content that then gets distributed um, through, through other influencers or other brands, that's all earned um, in my view. Um, and in our team's view, we actually look at everything holistically through our content calendar. So every single day, um, and, and Steve had talked about this, they actually have a daily view as well. Um, we have content that we push out that's very buyer-centric um, in terms of specific need, informational needs of key communities. And we push that out through, through paid channels, earned channels, and owned channels. And traditionally, many companies would think of it as, you know, your press release goes first. We actually don't necessarily subscribe to that. Um, uh, through our own an analytics actually show when you actually push out um, some content through some other channels, um, through paid um, and owned, and then amplify it through earned channels, such as press releases, um, and then and hopefully through social amplification, speaking, uh, and other earned opportunities, um, you actually see a dramatic impact in the number of conversions. Um, one important point that I want to bring out, and this is really, you know, getting to hopefully something, you know, a good idea for you to take forward to your teams, is thinking about it in a dynamic way. Um, so, you know, when we think of our press releases, we think of our earned media strategy, it's customized and personalized based on who you are. Um, and, and we do that for a variety of reasons. First of all, um, that increases engagement. Um, number two, um, we see a huge increase in conversion rate when we personalize that experience. So over 20% increase in conversion rate when we dynamically present content. Um, and this is all driven through our marketing infrastructure where all of our earned channels, our paid channels, and our own channels are all on the same technology inf infrastructure through marketing automation and our data and analytics platform. So that way we can customize content um, based on who you are. 
um, what type of organization you're with, what your specific role is, and what stage of the life cycle you're in. Um, in addition, another point that I want to bring up is that we've moved beyond traditional performance metrics. Um, and Steve had talked about this. Think, you have to think about earned media in a new way. Um, so it's got to go beyond just how many earned media stories did you pick up, how many page views did you get, how many click-throughs did you get, what I would call activity metrics. We actually look at something, we still look at those things and they're still important, but we look at some what we call business impact metrics, such as elasticity, so conversion rate, um, contribu contribution to pipeline, revenue, retention. Um, you can see that Steve was looking at uh, sentiment, share of voice, right? Those are the kinds of things that from an organizational performance perspective, that's really going to uh, drive more investment because you're showing the impact on the organization. Um, this approach has allowed us, and I think, um, you know, for, I don't want to talk for Steve, but Sodexo as well, to change investment allocation based on channel performance. Um, so what does that look like um, in terms of performance? So when we started coordinating all of our content promotion across all of these channels, in particular with earned media amplification. Let's go through some of the numbers on the decision marketing side. We saw an over 500% increase in the number of content downloads, um, which is really thought leadership in nature. We saw an over 40% increase in conversion rate. And one thing that, and I really want to emphasize this because Sodexo is also doing this very well, is, is really about the coordination, and Steve had talked about that. It's really about how are you coordinating across all these different channels, and you have to be doing that within a short time frame. So when we actually condensed our uh, amplification across all these different channels from two weeks to less than a week, so now we actually do it in a matter of uh, 48 hours, we saw an over 400% increase on top of those incremental downloads and conversions we had already seen through multi-channel promotion. So there is an exponential impact correlated directly with increasing A, a larger number of channels across paid, owned, and earned, and B, within a short time frame. So that's really the key ingredient to success for you when you look at your earned media strategy. And specifically, uh, Stephen also talked about you know, the, our partnership and how he's used press releases to, to amplify their impact from a communications perspective. We actually ran our own test, and we actually had been pushing out content and sharing that across paid, owned, and earned channels. When we added just a press release as a variable, as an isolated variable to our content strategy, we saw an over 250% increase in the number of content downloads. This goes beyond just number of press releases, this goes beyond uh, multimedia use or, or any other tactic within your earned media strategy. This is simply adding one specific tactic to a multitude of other channels and you see huge performance impact. Now one of the things that Steve talked about and I had talked about a little bit earlier is well, what kind of business impact did our strategy make Precision? Um, and, and I'm really proud to say that the team has really made a huge impact. From a lead perspective, um, we saw a 166% lift in qualified leads year over year. And I also will tell you that the earned media channels represent our third and fourth largest contributors in terms of channels to our pipeline. So absolutely huge impact, um, and it's been a, a, big, uh, a big factor in our success. Not only that, but we actually can now track the performance of our earned media and its impact on revenue. So we can see it from the first engagement all the way through the transaction. Um, and we saw a 2% lift in our top line growth over the past year. And we're on track to double that again this year. And finally, we shortened our sales cycle by over a third. And, and I really think that's a matter of placing the right information in front of the right people at the right time um, and not you know, we talked about paid advertising, the efficacy of that declining. It's about actually providing value when you are interacting with whoever that, that audience member may be, whether it's a buyer or an influencer. It's really providing true value, which is really about thought leadership, and people want to see something compelling. Okay, now I'm going to take you through one final case study um, in addition to Sodexo. So for those of you who are familiar, there's a company called MarketResearch.com, which is also one of our clients. Um, and they curate industry research reports online. 
So um, they do this for companies worldwide. Um, and they had three primary goals. The first goal was to demonstrate direct ROI on press release syndication. So we've been working with them and trying to figure out a way to, to help them drive their top line. Second, they wanted to increase the frequency of their press releases. Um, so in this particular case, um, they went from basically one a week to three to four, and now they're up uh, to five a week, uh, similar to what Steve is doing. Um, and third, they wanted to combine it um, and also test it versus the efficacy of other channels. So let's look at the results on the right-hand side. So first of all, within one year of implementing this strategy, and you saw the results of Steve was able to achieve in his team within 90, 100 days, right, which is very quick. Um, within one year, they had positive ROI of 27% directly related to their press releases and the earned media that actually drove business. Number two, and we had talked about this, both Steve and myself, not only did it have an impact on the earned media perspective, but actually it increased their search vis visibility ranking. So first page search results on key unbranded terms that previously they were getting no recognition for or no visibility. And finally, and this I think is the most astounding tactic of all, and this actually talks to what Steve also had talked about is the impact of earned media, is that press releases delivered 260% more traffic to their website, and this is for subscriptions to their service, than any other paid channel. So absolutely tremendous results. So I wanted to share that with you. So how do you bring all of this together? And then we'll take questions here in a second. Well, I like to think of things in three. There's, there's really three key factors to success. First of all, you need to master the mix. And what do I mean by that? Well, first of all, you need to look at the analytics in terms of where you're allocating your investment in terms of paid versus owned versus earned. And make sure that you've got the proper allocation, whether it's in program dollars or in resources and making sure that you're focusing on the right things. Um, and that's really what I call mastering the mix. Second, and I can't emphasize this enough, utilizing the power of expert insights. So this is the, the power of third-party independent experts and influencers as part of your content strategy. So many times when you see our content, and I'm sure many of you do, we leverage uh, people like Steve who, who are experts in, in their area um, who really drive a lot of activity and engagement with our content. And finally, as I mentioned before, and Steve mentioned this as well, it's really critical to coordinate channels. So, you know, the key takeaway here is the majority of marketers in particular, 70% still run their program on a campaign by campaign basis. So in isolation, by silo. You need to bring that all together if you want to be effective. So I think both Sodexo and Edcision, we've uh, demonstrated to you the results in terms of the impact of coordinating across channels. So Mary Morgan, I'd like to open up for questions now uh, for Steve and myself. Sure, yeah, before we do that, we're going to pop into uh, a poll question. It's going to come up right on your screen uh, to see if you'd like to learn more about how um, Cision and Sodexo are achieving these results. And um, it's basically just we'll reach out with more information um, on how you can enhance your earned media results. Um, so we're going to jump into questions now. And there really were questions focused on a couple different themes. So Steve, I guess I'll let you take these. Um, okay. How are these news releases distributed? Mm -hmm. um, you know, is it a focused approach versus just a general blast? Um, you put all the releases on the wire versus your website? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it is, again, I, this was a a bit of a, a volume approach, if you will, uh, from, from a content you know, creation strategy and then a, and then a media publishing strategy. Okay, so the idea was let's, let's publish, you know, press release a day. Let's put it out uh, on the wire. Uh, so our partner, you know, PR Newswire, supports us with that. Uh, World-class distribution system, uh, and that makes all the difference in the world for us in terms of the reach and visibility associated with, with those releases. In fact, in large part through that distribution system, that's how we end up landing uh, those releases on 200 plus uh, third party news and uh, media websites every single day. Now, do we customize that to some extent based on a particular topic or an industry segment? We will do 
some customization around that, but principally it is a uh, it, it, it's a broad distribution because ultimately what we're trying to do uh, is get eyeballs in the brand, drive traffic into the Texas digital ecosystem. It's a volume play for us. Ken, do you have anything to add on how we how we do that on the decision side? Um, no, I, I think that that's spot on, and I think you know uh, you know uh, Steve I, you know articulated that well. So so you know for for those of you you know when you think about and some people have asked me this on, at different conferences. Um, when you think of distribution and your distribution strategy in terms of the of press releases, you know, there's really two different aspects of it depending on the audiences that you're really and, and what goals you're trying to achieve. If, you know, if you're really looking for, you know, reaching media and journalists, then you definitely need to go with the wire because that's, you know, that's going to get you the broadest reach worldwide um, and that's where they're, they're looking for uh, article information and, and insights. Um, you, can, you need to combine that, and I think, you know, depending on your goal, and, and so Dexo shares the same, same strategy that we have, which is really it's about your digital exposure, world, you know, uh, worldwide. Um, and that's where also the wire will, will get you the biggest lift in terms of search visibility. In some cases, you might have something minor um, in terms of an infographic or, you know, some other piece of content that you may say, you know what, we want it online, but we're, we don't necessarily aren't looking for necessarily the reach uh, specifically. Um, there are also online distributions that you can that you can syndicate as well. Um, so you know you can vary it based on you know whatever your uh, goals are for the campaign. Another really interesting question we had, and I think this um, comes into play more times than not. You know, obviously Sodexo is a very large enterprise company, but for the small PR teams that have one to two people, um, you know, managing everything, what's the most essential part of the strategy? to really start with implementing, implementing, and then what do you follow that up with? Uh, you know, that's, and that's always a tough, uh, a tough thing to answer. And, and, and believe me, on the one hand, I work at Sodexo today. On the other hand, I've sat in that, that small, uh, small shop, small PR team, and, uh, and, and been on that side of the fence as well. Um, I, I would say this. I think, I think there's not necessarily any one thing and, it, and in fact, really, what we're talking about here today is is the idea of convergence. It's the, it's the power about it's the power of combinations, the power of correlations. Uh, at Sodexo, we talk about that in the context of um, you know we do, we use the term the power of three. Uh, it's our press releases, it's our Sodexo Insights publishing platform with our blogs, and it's our, and it's our social media uh, activity. And all three of those work together, uh, meaning in most cases. A release that goes out the door has a complimentary blog associated with it, and there's a social media push around both of those pieces. So you got, you know, from a from an end user out there somewhere in the world, you know, we've got three shots at hooking you to get you back into the Sodexo digital ecosystem to get you exposed to our brand, to more you know more content that you're interested in, et cetera. But to, to say, you know, what is the one thing? Uh, I think you have to look at that in the context of. Um, you know, I'll, I'll offer this, and we use, the, we use these terms as well. You kind of have to look at it in the context of potential and probability. You know, what's the potential of any given action to help you achieve what it is you want to achieve? You know, is a press release got the highest potential because you're going to put it out on the wire and it's going to get the broadest distribution? Uh, maybe it's social media engagement because really that's where your audience lives, uh, and you really need to be focused on talking to your audience in their habitat. So maybe, that's the, maybe that's the concept around, uh, around potential. You've got to marry that uh, or measure that against probability. What's the probability of success for any particular given action? I mean, if you've got the time, you've got the resources, you know, you've got the expertise. So it, it, it's hard to say. You know, it'd be, it'd be difficult for me to sit here today and say, you know what? If I was in a small shop, I think I'd be I'd be going down the press release road every single time. Frankly, I might advocate that for you, depending upon who you are and what you're doing, what you're trying to achieve. But I could just as easily probably make a case for social media. But again, the art, the issue here is really about convergence and, uh, and the power of combinations. And I think you do have to assess that in the context of potential and probability. Yep. And, and Mary Morgan, you what I would add to Steve what he said is that um, in order to to assess that probability, um, you know, uh, and we work with you know clients from you know small growth companies to to large enterprises, um, having having the, the automated tools in place to help you focus your efforts is really critical. Um, and so looking at the emerging topics and the key influencers who can make the biggest impact is, is really important. Um, and so obviously, you know, there, there's software that can help you do that and monitor that in real time. So, you know, I always say less is more and, you know, our philosophy on the decision marketing team is, 
that it's really it's, it's less about the quantity and more about the quality of the work of, of the content, um, and then coordinating that across the channels that Steve had mentioned. So, so you know, it, you know, a lot of a lot of marketers, a lot of communicators are still you know they throw out content. Oh, we think this will work, or we think that will work, but. When, until you look at the analytics and saying, okay, where does, where's the sentiment? What, where's the buzz? You know, what topics are emerging? Um, so that you can get a point of view that's unique and compelling. Um, then, then you have a much better shot at creating a really compelling content piece. And then, and then you do the PR distribution, which once again has a longer shelf life um, than, a paid, than a paid impression, right? Because organic lift, it'll stay there organic. Um, and, and so you'll keep you know, getting the, the benefits of that on an ongoing basis. So, but I think it is, it's the probability and, and, and focusing your effort based on wh where you're going to make the biggest impact is, is based off of you know, using some of those tools that can help you um, do it more effectively and efficiently. And, and speaking to content, um, you know, you said you were putting out press releases mm -hmm. four times a week. Um, you know, is it more important I think it's a mix, but is it more important to just get them out there, get the information out there when the content is weaker, or how much emphasis do you put on um, producing the content out there? Go ahead, Steve. There, is it you go first. To get it out there, or? So there's, I mean, there's certainly an element of timing associated with what content we're working on or working toward for distribution at a certain time. Uh, you know, some, some of it's evergreen, uh, but I, I would definitely tell you there is a distinct thought process in terms of when are we going to, do, when are we going to distribute a particular re release about our capabilities, our offers, our products, our services based upon buying cycles, industry trends, uh, time, you know, the time of year, maybe there's seasonal issues. It, it could be any number of factors that start to drive what content we're going to produce, meaning when we're going to put it in our pipeline, our production pipeline, and then when it's going to go out the door in terms of distribution. And do you have anything to follow up with? Yeah, I, I would say that um, in addition to that, um, when you're, you know, and I, I mentioned this a little bit before, is that so in our, in our own marketing strategy, um, you know, we, we try to customize the channel strategy based on the type of content and the audience that we're going after. Um, and so specifically, um, as I mentioned, so let's just say you know we're going after a specific audience like marketers or something like that. Um, we we you know we certainly will do, we'll have a multi-channel component of it, um, but we'll you know we'll try to you know the press so the press release the type of press release that we do um, whether it's multimedia and what kind of content we actually include in that. Um, we we may put if it's primary research and we think that there's a lot of buzz around it it's based on our analytics. Then, then we'll go broader and bigger, and we'll and we'll actually include more different content formats, which is also something that we haven't really talked about today so far. But that's something that you should be testing, whether that's video or photo or infographics, and including that in your content distributions. Um, versus something that is evergreen content, as Stephen mentioned, and that might be more just of a general content release um, that could be online only with some social and blog and and other other channels mixed in. Mary Morgan, I'll make one other, one other point here just to, in terms of the, um, I mentioned our pipeline, and I, and I would offer this, that we, we pursue what we call just-in-time communications. You know, we, you know, many of you are familiar with the idea of just-in-time manufacturing. Um, for us, it's just-in-time communications, and, and, and that gives us the ability to turn quickly on um, trending issues, uh, you know, things, you know, things that are happening you know, now, topical now. Uh, that we can respond to in terms of our capability to offer products, services, or, or the flip side of that in terms of our Sodexo Insights blogs. So we do operate that just-in-time communications model. So where, where I'm going with that is it's not like I'm carrying around 90 days' worth of press releases in a pipeline. You know, I might have three weeks' worth in a pipeline, but I've got, I've got the ability through that model uh, to sub something in there very quickly and be, and be timely and nimble with that. Uh, because ultimately, uh, from our perspective, uh, work in process is just a killer. You know, there's a tipping point that comes very early where you've got, you got, you got too much stuff you're trying to manage, you don't have enough time, it takes too long, the approval process is ridiculous, you can't get it out the door. Um, so we, we really try and keep work in process to a minimum uh, and pursue that just-in-time communications model. So 
So then based on the information we're presenting today, um, someone writes in, is this statement correct? Be the authority, utilize the brand ambassadors, and execute. Yeah, I, I would definitely agree with that. And I, uh, not to, not to say that necessarily any one of the three is more important than the other, because frankly, you, you got to have all three to make it work. Um, but I, I really can't emphasize enough that idea of the channels. And you know, Ken talked earlier about the mix, and you're having the right mix. And for, for us, it's a Dexo, it's the power of three, and that's where the real value lies. It's not the power of one, you know, it's the power of three. Okay, well, it looks like we're about out of time. I want to thank you all for attending. You can find an archive of our webinars on our website, decision.com. Additionally, some excellent research and slides from past webinars can be found on SlideShare. That's slideshare.com forward slash decision. And of course, you can find us on Facebook and Twitter. Uh, we are Cision, a leading media, communications technology, and analytics company that enables marketers and communicators to effectively manage their earned media programs to drive business impact. As the creator of Decision Communication Cloud, Cision has combined cutting-edge data, analytics, technology, and services into a unified communication ecosystem that helps brands build meaningful and enduring relationships with influencers and buyers. We represent PR Newswire, Corcana, Caro, Care Web, and Eye Contact. Steve, thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate you sharing your insight. Ken, thank you so much for giving us the vision uh, perspective. I know we try to practice what we preach. So um, I hope everybody enjoyed it. And again, thank you so much for tuning in. Thanks, everybody.